Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of um, Your Sense What. Your Sense What is a series, a monthly series that explores inspiring stories of accounting and bookkeeping firm owners who are actually building their dream firms and a life that they love. And interesting enough, we recently started a series uh, called Focus, Focus and Flow. Uh, it's uh, ADHD success stories in accounting where we get to talk to accounting and bookkeeping firm owners who um, who have been diagnosed with ADHD or they feel like, oh, I think I have this thing <laughs> and get to know how they uh, manage productivity. And today we have the incredible Blake Oliver. <laughs> it's such uh, a great honor to have you here, uh, Blake. And uh, Blake is, uh, is a CPA and is also the founder and CEO of uh, CEO of Earmark, and um, it's such a great privilege to have you here today, Blake. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me. Happy to chat yeah. about this. <laughs> Same here. You know, I was I was reading your uh, LinkedIn post about having ADHD, and there was a part where you mentioned that um, you didn't know till like maybe 20 years after that you actually got diagnosed when you were 10. <laughs> Do you mind just walking yes. me through that process? I was like growing up like for you when you were like 10 or when you were around that age. Yeah, so when I was 10, I was having some trouble in school and uh, I, I was not happy. And my parents weren't really sure what was going on. Um, I was bored. You know, that was, I think, what uh, I felt at the time. And, um, you know, I, I wasn't getting along with my fellow students, so I, 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 what, things just weren't going well. So they took me to a child psychologist. Um, I didn't really know what she was at the time. I just thought she was a nice lady who I talked to for an hour or two. Uh, and, and they took me there, you know, a few times, actually many times every week for a while. And yeah, apparently um, she diagnosed me with ADHD, uh, mm -hmm. but I didn't know it. I didn't know <laughs> it at the time. I just, I, then my parents didn't tell me until uh, I was uh, I was sitting at dinner with them the other night uh, at home. And um, we just had a nice dinner. And uh, I, I was saying, you know, I've been watching a lot of TikTok videos about ADHD. And this sounds really familiar to me. And my mom said, oh, well, yeah, you have ADHD. <laughs> and I said, I said, what? How is that? What? When, what what's going on? And she said, yeah, when you were 10, do you remember we took you to a psychologist and uh, she diagnosed you? And I said, but, but nobody told me. And my dad said, well, we, we felt like at the time that, uh, you know, it was better if we didn't tell you because, you know, you'd get through it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they did, I did change schools at that time into a, a different uh, program and that helped a lot as well. Um, okay. But yeah, it was a surprise. Interesting. Oh my. So would you say when you got uh, diagnosed then, did you later like had to go to maybe go to another hospital to have another diagnosis or something like that? No, no. It was just this one uh, psychologist, child psychologist. And, and you know, she recommended uh, that I switch into a different uh, program in school. Um, uh, she actually tested me and found I was I was uh, I qualified for um, the GATE program in Southern okay. California, which is a gifted and talented program. And um, there were some really, you know, brilliant kids in that. And uh, it just stimulated me a lot more. Basically, um, the pace was fast enough where even though I wasn't getting any accommodations for ADHD or anything like that, it, I, I was I was happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Did they, did they give you any, uh, the, uh, what is it called now? Maybe medications to manage the condition or was it just the switching into another program that worked for you? It was just the switching. Um, my parents were very against medication. And I think at the time, a lot of people were. There was a, uh, I think, you know, this is 30 years ago. There was much yeah. less acceptance of medication. And, and the medications weren't that great. I think the only option was Ritalin. Mm -hmm. And so uh, at least that was the one that people knew. And you know, you kind of, you didn't, you didn't want your kid on Ritalin, I guess, was, mm -hmm. was the attitude. And so uh, my parents said, um, you know, we'd rather just not treat it. I mean, it, putting me in the other school program was the way, their way of, of putting me in that program was the other way of treating mm -hmm. it. 
I totally agree because I remember when I was in high school, my grades were like, they were a mess. Like I was a mess in class. Then I had to switch to like another state entirely. And they were like, is this, is this the same Rachel that we knew like two years ago? They just like saw <laughs> a different uh, part of me. So I totally agree with the switch. I totally agree with the switch. So now bringing yeah. this into the accounting prof profession now, how would you say um, you've been able to manage ADHD? In a profession that requires you know high level of detail and focus so um that's always been a challenge for me in school starting in elementary school even from second grade i had a planner and i would write down every assignment everything i needed to do in that planner because i realized young when i was young that if i didn't do that mm -hmm. i would i would lose track of it i'd forget things and i still do i misplace mm -hmm things all the time. I have to have a system to keep track of my keys and my my glasses and my wallet, right? If I don't have a special place to put everything and I always put it in the mm -hmm. same place, I cannot find it. And so it uh, kind of works that way for work as well. Um, I, uh, I actually credit this system for helping me to start my own practice because uh, once I started getting clients, I would lose track of the deliverables. What, what did I need to do for them? I have to run payroll on this day. I have to pay these bills on this day. I have to reconcile the books on this day. And for somebody with ADHD, tracking that in your head, hmm. right? As you know, it's very difficult. It's impossible. Yeah. So I had to make a system for it. And so my system was checklists, uh, calendar reminders. And I, 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 it was almost like I was managing the work of somebody else because in a way mm -hmm. i was and that actually is what helped me scale my practice and i tell everybody that if you want to grow an accounting firm you mm -hmm. have to get everything out of your head and into a True. system where somebody else can do the work uh, cool. so in a way the 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 my uh disability <laughs> if you will actually enabled me, it forced me to create these systems that everyone needs to create if they want to be a business owner and not simply an employee of their own accounting firm. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, yeah, that's, that, that's my system is, is checklist workflow, uh, you know, writing everything down, uh, documenting mm -hmm. every process when I do it. That's my Amazing. system. Amazing. So now bringing this into like your daily affairs now outside of work, what's, can you run me through your, maybe like your self-care routine? What's your self-care routine like? <laughs> well, so I don't, I don't do well in long blocks of work time. I've, I've always struggled to sit in my office all day long. So I work in short spurts. Uh, mm -hmm. When I was studying for the CPA exam, I would do mm -hmm. 25 minutes, 20, 25 minutes of studying. And then I would take a five to 10 minute break. Mm -hmm. And I would do that three times for an hour, or I would do that six times for two hours, that sort of thing. Um, and I kind of do the same thing with my work is I, 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 I use that, that, that technique is called the Pomodoro technique. Mm -hmm. um, and you can look that up. It's, it's really easy to set a timer, 20, mm -hmm. 25 minutes, take a short break. Um, that's kind of how I break everything up. And, and I try to actually only work about six hours in a day, but mm. because I'm hyper-focused, if I can be hyper-focused during six hours, I can do more than somebody who works eight hours. Mm. I can do, I can be productive for the equivalent of 12 to 18 hours. So it's all about, for me, it's about harnessing my hyper-focus which is part of the ADHD, right? Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Mm -hmm. The hyper, the hyperactivity is, is your superpower. That's what mm -hmm. lets you focus and be really, really productive. So as long as I can get that focus, I can get it done in shorter times, which is great because then I get the freedom to, you know, go and uh, take the late afternoon off, mm -hmm. right? Or pick up my kid from school um, and, so that's how I like to work. I like to work in like really focused sprints as opposed it. to just like sort of like somewhat productive though for 12 hours. 
I love it. I love it. So would you, would you say that uh, ADHD has contributed maybe positively to your work and your approach to problem solving? Yeah, I, I would say it's it's definitely been an advantage in many ways. Also a disadvantage though. Like I struggled yeah. to fit into a traditional accounting firm. That was really, really hard for me. And I only lasted about a year because I just found like commuting to the office and sitting in that office for eight hours or more every day to be very difficult. I don't like being in one place. I like to move around. So when I work for myself, it's nice because I can say, if I'm tired of you know this office that I'm in right now, I can go to a coffee shop and work for two hours and get a change of environment. And that change mm -hmm. of environment stimulates my brain and makes me more productive. So um, I think it's all just about, it's about understanding your strengths and your weaknesses and then building a, a, a job or a schedule that works for that, whatever that is. Oh, amazing. So in, in one part of, you know, in your LinkedIn post, you mentioned that it fuels your creativity, right? Is there like a specific area where you say, oh, I think my ADHD got me in this <laughs> in this area. Specific uh, like examples of creativity. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. um, it was, I host a weekly podcast. And Ooh. so sometimes my best ideas for the show, what we're going to talk about on the show, yeah. they come out when I'm not at my desk at all, when I'm out for a walk or when I'm swimming. Um, and so it's really important for me to get those kinds of like mental juices flowing by moving physically. I always like need to be moving to think. So <laughs> when I take phone calls, um, I'll, I'll go on a walk and especially team phone calls where I don't have to be on camera and my team understands this, right? I can go take a walk and they know that I'm focusing. That's how I focus. And um, that works really well for me. It, you have to live in a neighborhood with good cell service. For this <laughs> True. That's very important, you know. Um, so, so, yeah. Yeah. So bringing it into uh, the workplace now, and I'm thankful you just mentioned it. How do you think workplaces, especially not just the workplaces now, the accounting industry can be more uh, supportive and inclusive of people with um, ADHD? So I think it means you have to, in my case, uh, let people away from their desks. You cannot expect somebody with ADD or ADHD to sit in a cube at a desk for eight, 10, 12 hours a day and be happy. So you're losing all those potential workers. So remote work has been fantastic for me. Hybrid work, remote work. Um, I think those are, those are policies that your firm can implement that will really help people who are neurodivergent. Uh, and it also improves the lives of your regular employees or your, your you know, typical uh, neurotypical employees as well, because they have flexibility. So I, I think that is like the first thing. Uh, the second thing is to look at timesheets. And I know that's a little harder, but I am the sort of person who is excited and stimulated by results. When I hyper focus, I don't want to think about how much time I'm spending on something. Thinking about that takes me away from solving the problem. So for me, the best environment is a results oriented environment, not an inputs one, right? It's one where I measured on what I achieve, not how long I sit in the chair. Mm. Uh, because, because when I'm motivated that way, I can achieve a lot. Uh, but when I'm just told to you know, fill out a timesheet, and that's what matters, then I, I do not thrive in that environment. So if okay. firms want to attract more creative types uh, into accounting, which I think we need these days because there's so much change happening, then we've got to change how we manage people. We can't, we can't manage people based on the hours they're sitting in a chair anymore. True, very true, very true. 
So true. Oh my God. I've actually learned so much. I, I don't know if I would uh, call myself someone that has ADHD because I know I struggle sometimes to focus on specific tasks, but whenever I'm like in that zone, like I just get it done. But having this conversation has really like opened my eyes to some areas I'm not paying attention to. And the Pomo the Pomodoro technique, you are the second person mentioning it right now because mm-hmm. I've, I've already mm-hmm. done my research on it, but I've seen how uh, it can help with time blocking and getting like work done. So thank you so much for sharing, Greg. <laughs> yeah, my pleasure. And you know, I want to say that um, these are not just techniques that benefit people with ADHD. It benefits everyone because I think mm-hmm. everyone is better off when they are more focused. True. And it's easier to be focused in short bursts than all day long. It's impossible mm-hmm. to be focused all day mm-hmm. long. Unless that's your superpower. I mean, some people may be like that, but that's mm-hmm. not me. <laughs> totally get that. So now what, what would be like some of the misconceptions you've seen or heard about um, ADHD? Maybe before you got you got the realization that, oh, I actually have this or even before or even after. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, it was, I'm trying to think specifically what it was. I think it's just the the negative aspects um, which my wife really dislikes (laughs) honestly everything that she uh she struggles with with me can be traced back to this which is forgetting things she tells me um when i'm like looking at my phone or on my computer and she talks to me she'll think she's having a conversation with me but my brain is completely somewhere else so Mm -hmm. i've taught her i've asked her to like if you're talking to me and i'm not looking at you then assume that I'm not paying attention. Um, Cause there's a part of my brain that will just like, sort of like talk back and forth. And I don't even hear what's happening. I don't even know how that happens. Mm-hmm. So forgetting things as well, like losing things, I'm constantly uh, losing things. Like I said, I, I have to have a system um, or I misplace my wallet, like at least mm-hmm. every month I lose it. <laughs> and wow. I, I can't find it for a day. It's gotta be, wow. I mean, it's, a, so, you know, I, I have the, I have one of these wallets that sticks to my phone now. Right. So I can't oh, lose my ID. Right? That's nice. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's about coming up with uh, systems that help you, whatever, however your brain works. Mm, amazing. So uh, now it's like my final question right now. What uh, advice would you give someone struggling with ADHD right now? It's going to be an accountant, a bookkeeper or, Generally, people struggling right now, what advice do you like have for them? Definitely check out that Pomodoro technique if you've never done it. Um, there's also a great book I recommend by John Briggs called The 3.3 Rule. And I did an interview with him on my Earmark podcast that everyone should check out. Go to podcast.earmarkcpe.com and look for the episode that's uh, The 3.3 Rule. And he, he has outlined a way to manage a firm that uses these short bursts uh, to be more productive. And it's not just for people who have ADD or ADHD, it's for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, my recommendation, I guess, is to learn your strengths and your weaknesses, like read about it, uh, because I actually don't view it as a disorder. I know that that's in the name of it, mm-hmm. but to me, it's just a different way of your brain thinking. And I've lived with this my whole life and it's made me very successful, relatively speaking. Like I feel, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give it up. Maybe, um, I'm actually thinking about like trying some of the newer medications to see if it helps. Cause I know there's ones now that can help you focus that don't have say the negative effects of like a Ritalin, yeah. but I wouldn't give up my creativity for anything. Um, I feel like that is what makes me entrepreneurial. So I would say, in short, my advice is to embrace it, to learn about it, and to design systems for yourself that allow you to get the most out of it while experiencing the fewest disadvantages. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much for that. And I think I would definitely try out the Pomodoro technique because I'm more of a... I'm more of a pen and paper girly, like just write it the things I need to do mm-hmm. down. I would definitely explore that technique. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you so much, Blake. It's been a great time chatting with you. Thank you for sharing your stories. And because I feel like 
people that share their stories, they they tell people that, okay, you are not alone in this. Yes, I'm going through this. And this is how I am managing it. And this is how I think you can too. So thank you so much for sharing your story. It really means a lot. Thank you, Blake. My pleasure. Thanks for the uh, opportunity. <laughs> thank you. So I'll be ending the recording.